check out my sounds make sure we're good here Apologize. All right, so we're good. Just want to say, uh, hope you guys had a great weekend. We got a great week ahead of us, and there are some breaking things taking place right now within the crypto space that I'm going to gloss over really quickly because I did have a show planned, but these couple of things that I couldn't avoid. So we're going to talk about those in the beginning, and then we're going to really jump into the content that I have for you now. This is Dig Deep Crypto. I'm OAB telling you that, yes, this is the right place and this is the right time. So as of about 20 minutes ago, the U.S. lawmakers filed a SEC Stabilization Act to fire Gary Gensler. So the U.S. capital markets must be protected from a tyrannical chairman, including the current one. And that is Congressman Warren Davis that wrote that. <laughs> well, looking at that. They must have really rushed to put this article out because that should be Warren Davidson, not Warren Davis. We got a typo right there. So this is what his full statement was. He says that the U.S. capital markets must be protected from a tyrannical chairman, including the current one. That's why I'm introducing legislation to fix the ongoing abuse of power and ensure protection that is in the best interest of the market for years to come. It's time for real reform and to fire Gary Gensler as chair of the SEC. Now, Warren Davidson was giving uh, Gary Gensler really good questions, put him in straight hot water when he uh, was in front of Congress before and he wouldn't give any answers about uh, what Ethereum was a security and some more questions about his connection with Elizabeth Warren and so forth and so on. I made a video about that on Judaverse uploads. Feel free to go check that out. All right, next, we have Kevin O'Leary. Kevin O'Leary says that he would fire the Coinbase CEO if he worked for him. So quickly in this article, he just stating that uh, he thinks that it's dumb to go to war with the SEC. Uh, he wouldn't be somebody that would have his money held in that company as a stockholder or whatnot. He would withdraw his money knowing that Brian, uh, Brian Armstrong was going at the SEC. So that's something that he said that he would do. He would get rid of that guy because he thinks that trying to go after the SEC will be way more costly than uh, maybe settling or something like that. But we do know that Kevin O'Leary was one that was intertwined with FTX, and he says that he does back Sam Bankman Freed even after everything took place. So, how much faith can be put into his word? Now, last, as a preface to this video, something else that was breaking today, it's a lot of breaking news going on. But today, American citizens will be uh, to be evacuated from Taiwan as tensions grow in China. So I say I bring this up and this is the beginning of what this video's content is going to be about because we're talking about threats of war, more world war threats. So you're going to see something about Russia, Ukraine, the BRICS nations in this video, and we're going to see which cryptocurrencies and which blockchains are benefiting off of these countries and that region as a whole. You guys do not want to miss this one. All right. But to get started, how I always like to get started, these are the top five cryptos for the day. Looks like you got Sui, Atom, Mask Network, Filecoin, and Uniswap making out the top five. But it's not that busy of a day. Not too much action really going on. Now to the good stuff, which is my watch list. We have Cosmos is number one. Cypherium, get out of there. Cypherium number two, we have Celo, uh, Cardano, and Apollo Currency at the top five. And then we got HBAR, DSO, Algorand, you know, rounding out um, as honorable mentions in the top five. So you guys see Cypherium there. A lot of people haven't heard about Cypherium. And I'm somebody who does a lot of research on different regions in the world because something that may be uh, very popular here in the States 
may not be so popular in other areas. However, they could be a viable blockchain and some viable technology to, that will be utilized. Cypherium is one of those projects. So China's blockchain services network, that's BSN, they are integrating Cypherium's blockchain. They says that Cypherium, a blockchain based on central or a blockchain focused on central bank digital currencies joins ethereum solana tezos and hyperledger fabric among others the blockchain services network developers uh, they have the opportunity to access useful tools and deploy dApps on cypherium so far the network has integrated ethereum solana hyperfabric hyperledger fabric tezos consensus quorum and more the platform, which is split into a Chinese version and an overseas version, is accessible through cloud-based city nodes in China and abroad. And it sells us with that heading, Cypherium, to enable a CBDC exchange. All right? So that's going to be something that we're going to talk about going forward in the future. But what I did want to really hone in on today on this video is talking about the world wars. We just seen a couple slides ago that we are evacuating americans out of taiwan and we've heard about taiwan hong kong and japan and the growing tensions that's been going on over there over the past couple years and it seems that it's beginning to heighten now based off of this article but there have been technologies that have been in place that are going to benefit off of the changing of the financial guard and what takes place with their digital assets and their financial industry. And that's what we're about to look at right now. If you guys are just tuning in, make sure you give me a like, a follow, uh, subscribe to the channel, do all those things because those things help boost the channel and allows for people to get this kind of information. The information that I provide here on Dig Deep Crypto is something that many do not witness many do not take the chance or the time to dive into this type of stuff which i do take the time to show you guys what's really taking place behind the scenes okay now i made a video this goes back a year ago and this is called crypto is the new greenback the center of russia and ukraine conflict this is the shift in the banking systems what you guys are going to hear here is when it comes down to world wars, world wars only take place when we are changing of financial systems. World wars haven't been around forever. So what I do, uh, what I've done here is I've actually taken some literature from different publications. Um, that would be this here, this one here and this one here all right these books really describe what a world war is how the civil war went what happened with the greenback uh with um with abraham lincoln and where they got the funding for for the civil war and how the banks were charging 30 percent interest now what you're going to hear here is something a little bit in more in depth you're going to hear some familiar family names and it's going to start to allow you to put the pieces together for what's taking place right now. And then after this clip, uh, it's about a two and a half, three minute clip. I'm going to show you guys articles about connections throughout Asia, throughout all the BRICS nations and as well as well as Ukraine from the technologies that are going to benefit. All right. So take a listen to this. Oh, and last, guys, uh, again, this channel is not for the fluff. I provide real educational information, and that's what I seek to do. I love history. I love to see where we come from, to where we're headed, and those type of things, since I know that there's nothing new under the sun, it allows me to get a good grasp of what is to come in the future. So when you guys hear this from the early 1900s, you guys are going to understand what we're doing now what's taking place in Taiwan and Ukraine and in Russia and what's going to continue to take place as more wars and rumors of wars come about here in the near future. All right, give it a listen. In our public school system here in the States, 
They don't necessarily tell us everything we need to know about our own history. You have to cross-reference to get a better understanding of what is and what is not. I also want to read a little bit further just about uh, the central banks and how these things operate here in the world. In 1913, the private central bankers of Europe, in particular the Rothschilds of Great Britain and the Warburgs of Germany, met with their American financial collaborators on Jekyll Island, Georgia, to form a new banking cartel with the express purpose of forming the third bank of the United States with the aim of placing complete control of the United States money supply once again under the control of private bankers. That third bank is called the Federal Reserve. End quote. Quote, Later in 1913, apparently unwillingly to risk another questionable amendment, Congress passed the Federal Reserve Act over Christmas holiday while members of Congress who were opposed to the measure were at home. Now, in the United States, they passed for the Federal Reserve to create the Federal Reserve when it was not voted upon. So the Federal Reserve was implemented illegally and it's still around to this day. We adhere to it. We act as if none of these things took place. Now, we're going to see going forward in the next couple of minutes who was paid off, which president was paid off and his exact words about what he said he did and how he regretted putting the Federal Reserve into existence. All right, this is good stuff. Check it out. This was a very underhanded deal as a constitution which explicitly grants Congress the authority to issue the public currency does not authorize it to delegate that authority to another party. And so it should have required a new amendment to allow Congress to transfer that authority to a private bank. But Congress passed it and President Woodrow Wilson signed it as he had promised the bankers that he would do in exchange for a generous campaign contribution. But Wilson later regretted that decision as he stated in 1919, end quote. This is what Wilson said. I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is now controlled by its system of credit. We are no longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and the rest of a small group of dominant men. Okay, a small group of dominant men. That's what we are currently now. These dominant men are those quote unquote 13 families people talk about, the private bankers. So what I do here is I understand what's taking place within the world and in this financial system. My goal is for everybody that pays attention to my videos is to avoid universal basic income. Now, granted, there are some countries in the world where commerce isn't available like that and universal basic income would be a great thing for them. Now, in America, that will only be a system of control. It'll be a system of control in other countries and other continents as well. However, we've been free over here, free for the most part. There is a bit of debt slavery, uh, the different credit systems that we put, uh, that we sign our names over, and we have to pay that off. They utilize our money to pay that off, that account's receivable. So they're not even giving us money. They're just putting our name on a new account as an account receivable, and then we're paying that off in this fractional banking society as how they do things. But I'm not really going to dive into that. I do want you guys to understand that World War is nothing but propaganda. When you start seeing these uh, articles and such, yes, there are some people that are losing their lives, but it's all over a financial change up, whether it be oil, uh, whether it be uh, a change of a banking system. These things take place and they're chosen by a few, some warmongers, people who make money off of defense, 
people who make money off selling weapons, people who make money off of trafficking people. Uh, this, this society that is global and corrupt, when you see world war, it's the same people that are in control, the George Soros of the world, the ones who pay folks and pay organizations and lobbyists and powerful men uh, that pay the ones that's not as powerful, their puppets in the government positions, politicians, Congress, all of that, legislative spots, presidents as a whole, right? They are the ones that we have to look out about, check out what they're doing and get an understanding of what their truly agenda is and uh, act accordingly. But with this channel, we're going to look at the technology that they're choosing because those are the things that we can invest in that there's no way they can keep it from us as long as we have those investments, put them in a safe place, and we're in position for that train to come hit us. All right, this video only has about 30 more seconds left, and then I'm going to go on with the rest of this uh, broadcast. End quote. And to take one more read, we're going to begin here. Quote, the very next year, World War I started. And it is important to remember that prior to the creation of the Third Bank of the United States, which is now named the Federal Reserve, there was no such thing as a world war. End quote. Now take your eyes back to the screen as we're going to go forward here with this article. During this time, from the Civil War to World War II, there were plenty of bank failures. We All right, so just want to end it off there, because currently now we're seeing a whole lot of bank failures. Now, let's get into the rest of this broadcast. Ripple joins Hong Kong CBDC pilot and partners with Fubon Bank. Now, Fubon Bank is with Taiwan. It says Ripple Labs has launched a new payment platform for the central bank digital currency in Hong Kong called the electric Hong Kong dollar that you see there. All right. It says a Hong Kong unit of Taiwan's uh, Fubon Financial Holdings Company is part of that new e Hong Kong dollar. Okay. Some fast facts. Ripple announced in a press release Thursday that its new CBDC platform can facilitate central banks, governments, and financial institutions to issue their own CBDCs and manage the digital currency's full life cycle. So when these central banks partner up with Ripple, Ripple is taking over the full life cycle. Everything that is possible that a banking institution does, lending, borrowing, uh, and more, right? These things Ripple takes care of for them and their technology, the XRPL. As part of the CBDC pilot program launched by Hong Kong's Monetary Authority, the same day Ripple said it will work with Fubon Bank in Hong Kong to test real estate asset tokenization as a potential use case for the electric Hong Kong dollar. It's a huge honor for Ripple to be one of the select few organizations participating in the program. That's what the Ripple vice president spoke about. We have now the opportunity to demonstrate how real estate asset tokenization can be brought to the citizens of Hong Kong. Fully integrated solution will be an industry first use case demonstrating the power of leveraging a CBDC for real estate equity asset release. He actually, he also added, Ripple said that through the program, commercial banks in Hong Kong will benefit from an ability to offer streamlined loan services and more flexible payments. And it says here that there will be full fledged payments, programmable payments, offline payments, tokenized deposits, settlement of Web3 transactions and settlement of tokenized assets. Last, a total of 16 banks payment firms and blockchain companies will participate in this pilot program test for those use cases. Those include the Bank of China, China Construction Bank, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, alongside HSBC, Standard Chartered Bank, Visa, MasterCard, and Alipay, okay? 
So why is Ripple targeting Taiwan, Hong Kong, and their real estate? Well, here's a great reason here. Taiwan's semiconductor success is fueling a surge in home prices. Home prices in Taiwan are rising in tandem with the expansion plans of the world's most important semiconductor manufacturers. Nowhere, I'm reading from right here, if you're following, it says nowhere is the economic impact of the chip industry on the housing market more visible than in Taiwan's main tech hub just 30 minutes south of Taipei by high-speed rail. Luxury apartment complexes are being built just a stone throw from the Science Park in the city's north, where the headquarters of the world's biggest chip manufacturer, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, and other companies are located, churning out crucial chips. It says that home prices have soared 99% over the past five years and prices are still 22% higher than the last three months of 2022 compared to a year earlier. By comparison, the total value of homes in San Francisco fell by 6.7% from the year before in December, the most of any major city in the metro area. So we see that uh, Taiwan is growing substantially and their real estate is really booming and they have a new technology with this chip that I'm sure is not only going to stay in Asia, they're going to begin pushing that worldwide, which Ripple will benefit from, the XRPL ledger, right, will benefit from because it's going to be on their blockchain. So not just recently has Ripple been with China. Ripple has been with China way before 2017, but that's where this article came from. Well, actually, March of 2018, speaking about uh, a relationship reached in 2017. Quickly, as I read this, it says Ripple noted that cross-border payments related to China's e-commerce, the electrical Hong Kong dollar, right? E-commerce market reached one point zero seven trillion dollars in 2017 so that is a trillion dollar market use case that we're finding for ripple just off of china's e-commerce alone going forward we see here that sbi holdings and russia banks partner how will ripple benefit from this this is from 2019 okay Ripple has been around making partnerships for such a long time now, and we're about to see all of this come to fruition very, very soon. And I'm hoping you guys have invested a little bit of your finances into this because I don't want you guys to miss this boat at all. It says the partner of Ripple, Japanese corporation SBI Holdings, reached an agreement with two Russian and Japanese banks, the Russian Direct Investment Fund, and the Russian Japanese investment fund are planning to invest in SBS Bank, a subsidiary of SBI. This agreement will expand Ripple's presence in the Asian region. It was also signed during a meeting between Russia President Vladimir Putin and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. And in 2018, Ripple entered a partnership with SBI Group which is uh, Yoshitaka Katao, and this is what he stated. He said right here, not only does it have a clear use case, but XRP is also faster, cheaper, and more scalable than other digital assets. I strongly believe, this is Katao speaking, it will become a global standard in digital currencies. A global standard in digital currencies, okay? Ripple XRP is, go, is a huge deal. And they tell us here that the partnership involves the implementation of large projects totaling uh, more than 1.4 trillion rubles. And the plans of 15 other countries are going to take place and become a part of this partnership, which should total about $40 billion in rubles. So Ripple will benefit from this partnership it's decentralized technology will be required. So we're looking at Russia, China, Japan, Taiwan, all of these these entities are 
bringing forth their financial institutions, their commercial organizations, and they're putting it on top of the XRP ledger. We see today that Taiwan is utilizing XRP for their real estate tokenization. Do you guys believe that Russia will begin doing that? Do you think that China will begin doing that? Do you guys think that uh, Palau, the Republic of Palau, which is outside of the Philippines, will begin doing that? Will the Philippines, are they using XRP? Are they partnered up with Ripple? You guys may see some uh, amazing things about that as well. Okay? So, what we, what we have here, Ripple partners with TravelX to launch an enterprise crypto payment service in Brazil, China, India, Russia, South Africa. We are going to begin to look at who are the BRICS <laughs> and who are, are they partnered up with? Excuse me. So this says the rollout of Ripple's fast and cheap on-demand liquidity payment service means that enterprises will no longer have to wait three to five days to settle costly cross-border transactions. Now, who does TravelX work with? The digital payment network Ripple announced on Thursday that the foreign exchange company TravelX will utilize RippleNet's on-demand liquidity to facilitate cross-border payments between enterprises by utilizing XRP. It also noted that Travelers Bank is the first bank approved by Brazil's central bank to operate exclusively in foreign exchange. While other Latin American companies such as Banco Rendimento, Remesa Online, Frente Cortora, and Banco Topazio have already used RippleNet services, the Central Bank of Brazil's approval makes this the first time Latin American bank has utilized ODL, said Ripple. TravelX would first enable these cross-border payments between Brazil and Mexico. Now we see that Mexico is connected with Ripple, on-demand liquidity, and everything that's going to take place here in the future regarding cross-border payments. So I want to show you guys that. Coming to the end, uh, I didn't put my article up here about India, but I'll probably show you guys that on the next video, just how Ripple is connected with India, but they have 50% market share over India, 50% market share over India. So they are a co-owner of India, but we have Ripple is already well positioned in Africa. These are Ripple locations in Africa. We have Benin, Burkina Faso, the Ivory Coast, Egypt, Ghana, Kenya, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, South Africa, Togo, and Uganda. And we see here South Africa, which is one of the BRICS nations, the original BRICS nations, they are connected with Ripple. So I bring up all of those BRICS nations because of russia primarily and you know the russia ukraine war is going on now but who is the sister company the uh non-profit so to speak i'm putting these up right now the non-profit so to speak even though it's stellar but jeb mccaleb was a part of ripple and he branched off to do stellar the ukraine government picked stellar foundation to develop their national digital currency so the Stellar Development Foundation worked with Ukraine's government to digitize uh, the Hervina, Vina will officially launch later this month. It says, and this is back in 2021, Ukraine's government has chosen a Stellar blockchain network as a platform to build a central bank digital currency. Announced Monday, the Ministry, the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine and the Stellar Development Foundation signed a memorandum of understanding to build out virtual assets, ecosystem, and national digital currency of Ukraine. The National Bank of Ukraine has been researching the possibility of CBDC implementation since 2017. So I just showed you here that in 2017, Ripple was working with China. In 2017, also, Stellar 
was working with Ukraine. China, Russia connection, BRICS, Ukraine, Stellar. You guys seeing how all these are one, they all are working together, even though we get from the media that they are at war behind the scenes when there is rumors of world wars, there's always some type of financial incentive involved. Here, we're seeing that they're bringing forth a new financial system, which is going to end up paying off all kind of debts, which is going to be able to be utilized as something where it won't be inflationary. So people won't be minting more coins. They will be burning off these stable, uh, these stable coins, making them deflationary to avoid having it to be, um, minted more to increase on inflation kind of like how the us dollar and fiat is done currently now so that's what we're going to see going forward regarding stable coins they're going to be deflationary so that the value will rise as need so that it can cover all kind of payments so stable coins may be worth hundreds of dollars as opposed to being worth one dollar as it is currently now all right so uh, i apologize for my uh, stumbling over my words guys i had a lot that i wanted to get out had a short time that i wanted to do it in i've passed up my 30 minutes but i appreciate you guys staying as long as you have again feel free to go check out my catalog on youtube it's on dig deep crypto oab which you're seeing this on now if you're on youtube and in z9 i have my judiverse uploads where i talk about some of the gary gensler and how his viewpoint is regarding him um Going after all of these coins, I put a little funny clip together uh, that I think that you guys may enjoy uh, if you check that out as well. But until next time, guys, I should be making some more videos coming up this week. Make sure you guys like, put the notifications on so you don't miss it and be able to tune in live as I get going. All right. Check you on the next one, guys. Peace.